Hi everybody, uh, in this video I'll be showing you uh, URL parameters or custom fields, how to use custom fields and URL parameters to send data to Leads Hook and how to save data inside Leads Hook even if the Leads Hook decision tree is embedded, right? It'll still work. Okay, so just a, a bit of theory first. Um, let's say, forget the direct link version, that's the embedded version. So there you go, we have mylandingpage.com. So it's your page on which you've got uh, your decision tree embedded. And let's say for argument's sake, we wanna uh, pass, uh, as you can see here, gender, traffic source, uh, interest, and click ID. So these three things are hidden fields. Uh, gender is uh, obviously the field you wanna capture by, um, so this is the, these are fields you're passing to uh, leads hook. And this is the one that you'll be generating because of the answers that they pick. So using leads hook to generate data as well as pass data uh, from a third party system, such as a traffic source like Google or Facebook or any other traffic source for that matter. All right, so that's uh, the value that goes into the field called gender, which is uh, men and women. Now at the same time, we're uh, pushing ads uh, or traffic from uh, our Facebook ad or post or Google search, Google ad, blog posts, email, social media, native native campaigns, um, solo ads, uh, any, any number of other things you wanna send traffic from. Because it's, cause it's outbound traffic ends up on your page um, or two ways. Or alternatively, it goes through some sort of third, third party tracking system. So if you, an affiliate marketer or a marketer that is using a third party traffic system and you're rotating the traffic from that that third party system, uh, such as Volume, Prosper 202, CPB Labs, any of the other sort of platforms that allow you to redirect traffic through them, then that's what you're gonna do. Your exit URL or the URL that you put in your ad and or the other, uh, wherever you're running your, your traffic from is gonna have the ad of the, of the tracking system. Uh, but most of you would have uh, a link that goes directly to your um, to your page where you've got the decision tree embedded. Right. So end of the day, they both come to the same place. Now let's assume that um, our traffic source is Facebook. Our interest in what is Walmart. Um, now in the case of the third party tracking system, uh, obviously you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna add these to the end of the URL, and they're probably gonna be dynamic parameters, uh, usually with curly brackets. And so then your traffic source, so for example, in this case, um, Facebook would replace uh, the interest with Walmart. Not that Facebook gives you the ability to put interest in your ads, but if they did, this is what it would do. And similarly, that goes, now what the third party tracking system is gonna do is gonna turn all of that into some sort of sub ID or click ID and pass through um, a bunch of uh, numbers and letters. And that's what pops up on the page, right? So in our case, we've got, uh, so now what's gonna happen is because uh, uh, the if you're doing direct link then facebook and walmart will end up in traffic source and interest because that's what you're pushing through in the case of the third party tracking system you obviously only will only get the click id but you could uh, append the other things to it if you wanted to uh, the third party systems do allow you to send that so you could push uh, traffic source as well as um, interest uh, in here as well this is exactly how utm parameters work UTM campaign, UTM source, UTM, um, you know, whatever else, keywords, ad group. Uh, you could use all of those UTM parameters and just attach them at the end here. I've used traffic source and, and interest, but you could, you, UTM parameters would work just as well. The thing to ensure is that these traffic, these, um, uh, these variables that you're using uh, are created as custom fields inside Leadsook. So I'll show that with a live example, just want to cover a little bit of theory first. And then the uh, leads captured, and uh, that's basically how the campaign uh, runs. So in this case, I've got a Jenny. She's given a she's got the decision tree. Uh, she ends up at my list called shopping list, and uh, these are the, the details we have about her. Some of the details were, were created as a result of them going through the decision tree. Some of the data was obviously passed from your traffic source. Right. So what does that look like inside Leadsook? So here's I've got a very simple decision tree that I've made. Um, my first one, uh, first node is a start node. It's saying, hi, I captured uh, the the name field. Uh, if you can see the name here, which is first name. So I'm showing first name over here. 
and then I'm asking a simple question, are you a man or a woman? And then I live in, it's got three countries, and then I'm distributing the leads back out to three different places. All right, so I just wanna show you how to do that. So first, uh, capturing of the data into the leads. Um, and for that, uh, I'm gonna go to Firefox. All I've done is I've got my embed code, which is right over here. And I've taken the embed code and I've put it inside uh, WordPress in this case, which is sitting right over there. All right, I've published it. Uh, and now let's go see what it looks like. All right, so while it's loading up, it's not optimized for delivery. So by all means, uh, excuse any issues. So there you go, that's what the first name looks like. I didn't pass anything through, um, just, just to show you the example, because this is not a, Facebook hasn't, uh, the, sorry, first name hasn't been passed yet in the URL, so obviously it's blank. But if you did, you would just go question mark, first underscore name, first uh, equals, uh, let's say I'm gonna put just uh, James, and you'll see James right there, all right? So basically, Leadzook grabbed the data from the URL, first underscore name is already an existing custom field inside Leadzook, and it's printed it out or displayed it onto the first node, all right? Don't worry about that, that's just something I'm playing around with. Um, all right, so anyway, that's uh, that's done. Uh, my next question is, uh, are you a man or a woman? And I'm going man, and then I'm gonna go and pick uh, the country. Before I show you that, I want to show you how to distribute the leads back out. Uh, a question is asked how to use uh, these um, uh, these nodes, uh, which is um, uh, the decision node, allows you to put logic in. So I'm splitting my, my leads up. This one here, I'm splitting up uh, men who live in Australia and they came from campaign one. So they go in one direction. Um, the second group is women who come from campaign two. Uh, we're not worried about the country in this case. So we've got a the question right over here and a custom field over here. So you can pick either one and you can create, um, uh, you can create uh, your your uh, your conditions. Okay, you can add as many as you want. So that's how you do. Uh, also in creating these conditions, be mindful of the fact that uh, we have the setting for any and all. All means obviously both have to be true. Any means any one of these has to be true. Okay, so that's the second one. I'm gonna cancel it out. Third one is no conditions. Uh, si the system automatically adds this in. This means anyone who does not satisfy this and this ends up here. So that way your your traffic is not stuck inside the decision node, right? We, we wanna, always wanna provide some way to exit out. So this is gonna be everybody who doesn't satisfy the previous conditions. Uh, also important, if you make a mistake over here and you're not quite making sure what's, what the hell's happening, well, they'll come out here because they don't satisfy these two conditions. Right, so save and close. So that's it, that forms the groups. Now you could have it any combination that you want. You can do postcodes, countries, URLs, um, area, location, suburb, um, gender, uh, any, whatever you're using in your, in your decision tree to split the leads up. That's how you do it. So in my case, uh, I am redirecting to websites. You, this could be, you don't have to do that. Uh, just return to another website, but you can actually fire webhooks as well. So if you put a webhook in, so then that way the lead will automatically get fired to a third-party platform. Same thing, uh, I'm just showing you the the uh, website version because I can show that quite easily. This is going to yahoo.com. Uh, that's going to YSL, uh, Yves Saint Laurent, uh, for if you're a, a female um, from campaign two. So we're assuming that they're uh, females with uh, some spending power who want to go there and do some shopping and everybody else just goes to Disney. All right, so you can see the URLs already here, but uh, we had um, we had the URL of, so let's say for example, if, now, if I want to pass the values to, normally it, it's either gonna be a forward slash or without a forward slash. See which one works, it all depends on what the third party platform, how it's designed. Uh, normally ending a, a, a closing slash, forward slash, would normally do the job. And this is gonna be, let's say if I'm passing values here, so it's gonna be, sorry, uh, UTM underscore campaign uh, equals, it's gonna be UTM underscore campaign. So here we're doing it the opposite of the entry. In the entry we had, um, so let me show you what the entry was. In the entry we had, um, 
our variable and then the value, right? So I wanna put James inside first name. Uh, on the exit, it's the other way around where this is the, the, uh, the third party platforms parameter. So say for example, if the third party platform using is another landing page builder where you wanna populate this values or put them in hidden fields. And let's say they call their UTM campaign, UTM um, camp, for example, because they can only have seven characters or eight characters as a limit. So you can have that. So that's so this variable is gonna come from your third party platform, wherever you're sending the traffic to. If you're sending the traffic to unbounce, it'll be the unbounce variables. Uh, and wherever you, whatever third party you're sending it to, you be, make sure you set this up as variables there or get someone to give you the variables that have been used on the third party platform. This here is Leadsook. So we're we're now printing or, or replacing the variable with the value on the way out, all right? So then Leadsook will replace UTM underscore campaign with the value that's been saved against the lead and exit the lead out, in this case, to yahoo.com. And you can put as many as you want. So it'll be ampersand and then whatever else there was. Let's say, for example, if there was um, uh, first uh, underscore name uh, equals, and it's going to be first underscore name. Right? Oops, that should be equals. Okay, and on and on and on. And you can send as many as you, of those as you want out. Similarly, you can send as many as you want in. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and just copy this and put it onto the other nodes so that way we can see what it looks like uh, and then we'll go ahead and do a test. Control C, save and exit. You've seen Laurent is gonna be that. Um, let's make sure, yep. And Disney. Okay, perfect. All right, so now let's um, let's test it out. So we want to test uh, uh, men Australia and campaign one. Go over here, first name ampersand uh, UTM underscore campaign equals campaign one. Uh, I believe that's all I need. Uh, actually, I need to go incognito so that I can test properly. Okay, so hi, James. I am Manu Ruin, looking for a woman. And I, I'm not mistaken, we're looking for uh, Australia. What is that? Yep, Australia. Right, so go back and do that. If I just go Australia, it's going to redirect to yahoo.com. Right, if I go click, go to Yahoo. Okay, I'm assuming uh, that the variables have been stripped out. So I'm going to try another one just to show it to you because Yahoo might be stripping out the variables. Uh, and therefore, we want to go to a page that we know which is, so I'm glad this happened because sometimes you need to test for these things and you'll think like, oh my God, Lidzook's not working or something's broken uh, when all it was was the site well, it does not allow you to send the, par the parameters to. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh yeah, the other thing I didn't do is I didn't publish it. Always publish. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, test men Australia and so there you go, right there. UTM campaign one and the first name. It was automatically replaced and so the values are working. Now if you notice that it, it put an exit button in, that's because I did not click uh, the immediate redirect button which is right over here. Now 
it won't um, it won't show you that so I think I'm gonna go ahead and change this to to that as well so that way we don't have that problem and we'll make this immediate redirect as well save and close and the very last one which is for Disney I think Disney does work from previous testing but uh, that's okay uh, let's not send Disney our traffic Save and exit, publish, so we update. And let's redo the test. But this time we'll do the second one, the women and campaign two, I believe. So let's do that. And instead of James, because they, let's call it Jenny. Uh, that was any country there you go campaign two camp oh yeah i did change that camp <laughs> campaign two and first name is jenny so that's working as well all right so you can see the url parameters are moving in and out and they're being sent to the right place uh, and so this is to basically to conclude that that's uh how the uh, the whole thing works and um, that's how you can send variables to leads hook and take variables or custom fields out of leads hook using decision nodes and also uh, and also your exit um, your results page nodes to do immediate redirects <coughs> excuse me or you can use um, uh, web books as well uh, l fire email notifications Right. I hope that um, gives a uh, good understanding of uh, variables uh, and decision node and uh, sending traffic out. Now you can also, uh, before I finish, one last thing I actually forgot, which is you can add a decision node up the front as well. <clears throat> so this is a split traffic. And you can have uh, the traffic this is going to be Google so you can have UTM in this case you would have source I don't think I've created the source uh, yeah, I, yeah I haven't I've only got campaign but let's imagine this is campaign is and I just go Google and I'm going to save that save and exit and put that up here I can actually do this so everyone who comes from Google sees the first node everyone who comes from everything else can go to a totally different decision tree on this on this side here or go to a different question you can actually have something like this where google traffic sees the first two nodes and the everybody else goes and sees the everything else and that's going to run through this as well all right so i hope that sort of uh, gives you some understanding that you can actually use the decision nodes are very powerful you can use them anywhere in the decision tree as many of those as you want in the, in the decision tree as well as right at the top of your decision tree to split traffic up into to become even more personalized Right. and to extract the data of the the um, the ver the um, URL URL and display them immediately onto the first node or any other node for that matter. Right, that completes uh, this short training video, and uh, thank you, and bye for now.